Hi, hello. Uh, welcome to the first session on Unix shell scripting. So, first of all, uh, thank you for opting Oracle to learn uh, shell scripting. So, the reason why Oracle is, uh, you know, uh, added this shell scripting course, though we are basically um, more into only Oracle database administration courses, the reason is uh, shell scripting is one of the primary or you can say one of the important skills that every DBA needs, you know, to make his life comfortable in day-to-day -day activities or you know to make sure that you have scheduled activities in place and uh, you gain maximum out of it by you know using scripts and write them leave it and just monitor after the script is completed not only this uh, you know uh, from the experience that i have got so far what i can suggest is uh, shell scripting is not the one which is only used for you know uh, scheduling something uh, because if I ask most of the junior DBAs, they would probably just say me only one thing that, you know, scripting is something that we only use for uh, scheduling purposes. For example, uh, schedule your, you know, arm and backup jobs, schedule your stats gathering jobs, schedule your housekeeping jobs or something like this. But not just that. You can do many things when you actually learn scripting. And another important reason why scripting has become so popular and so important for the Oracle DBA is because Oracle databases mostly run on Oracle, sorry, uh, Unix platforms. As it is worldwide accepted that Oracle is more stable and it works very good on Unix platforms rather than on Windows platforms. Uh, I'm not saying that there are no Windows platforms at all for Oracle, they are there. Oracle supplies, you know, software for Windows platform as well. But what I mean is, uh, globally, people will, uh, organizations always, uh, you know, uh, go with Unix platforms for Oracle databases to run because it is proved that it is highly stable and reliable on it. And having understood this point, that's the reason Unix shell scripting has become one of the very, very important primary role for every DBA to gain. So once you gain two years or three years of experience, definitely uh, this shell scripting skills will add a lot of benefit to your profile, not only for your you know career with respect to career, but also for your day to day activities and also for, to uh, make your life easier. And, you know, saying this one, uh, the course is also designed in such a way, as you see on the screen. Uh, Okay, sorry, before that, uh, I, th I hope you know me uh, already. So I'm Kumar, I'm, uh, you know, Oracle DB architect and consultant. So I work for independent uh, uh, projects as well uh, for the clients across the globe. And also I love learning and also training people uh, to train them to the professional level. Uh, that's where I'm interested in. So that's about me in short. You can find uh, about me more on my Facebook profile page and, you know, um, or skill page also. Um, so that's where you can find me and coming to this course content. Yes, the course is also designed in such a way that we will basically start understanding the scripts from the basics. So the course will go in this fashion. I will definitely consider that though you have got some basic knowledge on scripting on basic knowledge on Unix platforms on basic knowledge on anything related to Unix, but I will consider that I'm speaking to the target audience who has no knowledge on Unix. So this particular course will basically say that, you know, uh, consider you have a Unix platform already and you're already started working on it. How can you make maximum out of that Unix platform? And how do you write your own things on the Unix platform? Because uh, I'm sure that most of the DBAs across the globe and including you, if you're an already existing DBA, would be using only putty sessions or you know putty sessions to connect to the database environment isn't it and all the putty sessions basically are on the unix platforms i'm not going to speak about what shell you are going to use but because i'm speaking most of the introduction part at the moment so i mean that when you connect to the putty or any other terminal which is only a text based terminal definitely command based you know uh, interaction with the server is very very important and when you gain confidence on writing any command to the operating system and you can get the things done through the command line console itself then you are the best dba not only with respect to the database administration but also with respect to handling the operating system 
as well this particular course will gain you or will get you that particular confidence that you are the you know you you can make that change in the complete cycle of database administration with this additional skill all right saying this let us come back to the content as well you know as i said the content is designed in such a fashion saying that considering you are a fresher considering you are you know a layman to actually uh, shell scripting this will completely concentrate in explaining you each and every point crystal clear before we jump into the tools development so i hope i'm very clear in the beginning itself this particular course is not to let you you know this is not for the audience who wanted to become expert only at shell scripting but this particular course is for the existing dbas who wanted to make use of the scripting skills into their day to day activities saying that it doesn't mean that you cannot become an expert with this shell scripting course definitely you can do that but whatever my way of approach and my way of training would be always linking or leaning you towards simplifying your oracle database administration jobs so you can also use the same level of you know uh, training that i am going to give on the other domains as well it is also applicable for the network administrators where they wanted to simplify their job using scripts it is possible similarly the same course is also applicable to the linux administrators where they wanted to simplify their skills yes it is for sure but linux administrators because they start you know uh, working on the linux environment starting from the commands and scripts and shells this would be uh, looking like a very basic for them but still it is very very important for us so in the first chapter we are going to completely see about the basics of bash script so what is exactly a bash script why did we choose bash script what is that included in the bash script how do you basically categorize different kinds of shell programs and how do you execute them and how do you basically build one small script that is what we call it as a building blocks and then how do we run the script what are the different ways of running a script that you actually create and then how do we debug scripts when i say debug scripts it is very important because if in case you have become little expert in writing scripts and you have written approximately 500 lines of script and then if you had some issue at you know uh, 350th line definitely you know script will not tell you where the problem exactly is but it will only just error out in that case how do you basically debug the script and how do you identify where is the error in your complete script that is the main important point but i am making sure that you know that well in advance because the same debugging scripts technique you can also apply to a small script that you are going to write because if you are the person who are writing the scripts right from today for the first time definitely for a file and script also debugging is very very important because that's where you learn things on your own and you will identify where the mistakes you have done on your own so having said this the next one that we are going to concentrate is about bash environment please do not you know uh, see these page numbers because the content is not yet updated the content is only updated for this session that means in this session we are going to see shell programs executing commands and building blocks and the content in this document is only updated for these three things and that's the reason you don't find the page numbers updated for the other contents but it will be updated anyway later and yes in the bash environment we are going to see what are the different uh, variables characters aliases and expressions whatever you are whatever are possible to be used inside the script and where is that you can use and the third one will be completely about new where you know we we will be seeing in case if you wanted to uh, do an interactive you know um, editing between the user and the interface that is nothing but your script what are the different ways of doing it and awk is another one which is very very important it's a way that you can actually control many things inside the script probably it will uh, you know you can say that uh, awk is the one that can do it you can also say that awk is something which is again a different course that huge is awk so that's the reason as you see here we will see what is awk programming first of all because awk is completely uh, you know taking your commands into a different uh, program and it it executes inside its uh, you know program levels and then pulls out the output from there so it's again different thing and we are going to concentrate that here and 
yes conditions and interactive scripts is where we are going to see if clauses case statements you know uh, this is one of the very very important part in the scripting because conditions are always there because if in case if you wanted a non interactive scripting and it has to be automated based on the results of something else for example if you say uh, i have a command say you know uh, it can be a b c d if this command throws an output called one you have to do this but if this command throws an output called two if you have to do this if the command throws the output three you have to do this how do you do basically with the help of if clauses that's what we are going to see here and because it's an interactive scripting also we are trying to learn that means how do we display error messages to the user to say that you know your script is successful now it is executed this is the output of the script how do you make sure that user sees the result of the script one after the other that's what we are going to concentrate in the fourth chapter and then repetitive tasks like you know uh, when i say repetitive task if you have the same job to be done 10 times 20 times or 30 times definitely loops are the one that we have learned from the basics of c language if you have been you know uh, engineer already so yes for loop while loop until loop how do we redirect the input output operations to the next shell or to the next script is what we are going to learn here and uh, because there are loops here in case if you want to break and continue based on some condition definitely that is also very important for us to understand so we will be doing that break and continue and how do we make a menu so when i say make a menu it is very very simple and straightforward to tell you that for example you run a script it will give you options like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 yes if you click on 1 i will give you the table space utilization if you click on 2 i'll give you the number of users connected to the database if you click on 3 i'll tell you the backup status of the database if you some if you need something like this that is what we call it as a menu we see that menu here in this particular you know uh, subsection of this chapter and then functions and signals are very important because we know what is a function function is something that will take some input into it and then generates one output and give it back so uh, functions are very very important because if you wanted to use a program or a set of commands again and again probably in a loop or a for loop or it can be outside that for loop based on a condition yes you have to definitely write some functions we will be dealing with those functions and what are the different signals that functions will generate automatically is what we see here last and very important chapter for us is tools development for the dbs so as i have been saying that i will be concentrating mostly on what shell scripting and how it is useful for the dbs mostly isn't it this is where i will be basically using all my skills whatever i have learned so far to actually implement and start writing some tools so that it will be useful for the dbs so definitely storage check when i say storage check in case if you wanted to check the table space utilizations of the database or you know um, consider a table fragmentation or it can be anything in case if you wanted to you know uh, generate some tool so that it makes your administration life easier how do you make that tool we will be seeing this in detail so the seventh chapter you can say we will not be dealing with concepts like six chapters instead we will be dealing with writing up the tools and then help ourselves to make our life easier so these last four things will actually give you a very good insight and that should help you to create your own scripts later on and then write your own tools according to the requirement i'm not saying that you know uh, these four tools are the one that will be blindly can be considered for any project but the reason why i pick up these tools is when we actually do and you know execute four different tools keeping some requirement in our mind i i'm sure that for your requirements in your project you should be able to you know make out some logic out of it and then start writing your own scripts and make your life easier in that environment so this is what you know i actually you know uh, wanted to tell you as a demo you can consider before we actually start the complete set of you know bash scripting and as i said definitely there is a long time to go to reach to the stage where you know uh, we basically write our own scripts and uh, develop our own tools so we will quickly start with the first chapter which is bash script basics 
please consider before we start the first chapter what is the prerequisite for this complete course is I expect that you already have an Oracle environment ready with you because we are going to practice it ourselves every chapter that we are going to deal is what we are going to execute so I expect that you guys have your Oracle Enterprise Linux environment ready because I'm going to use Oracle Enterprise Linux so I suspect that to start this particular course you should have Oracle Enterprise and like Linux installed on top of it Oracle database is also installed because as I said here we are going to write tools later to work on for the database so that's the reason my prerequisite would be having one Oracle Enterprise Linux environment and on top of it you have the Oracle database already installed so I have such database environment ready but you know uh, as I said uh, we will be basically using uh, uh, sorry as I said we will be uh, basically using that environment that is Oracle Enterprise Linux with Oracle database and the database version that I am going to use is Oracle 12c and please do not worry because if you are not aware of Oracle 12c I am going to use non CDB Oracle database environment it will be very much similar to your 11g database only so that's the reason throughout this course I'll be using Oracle Enterprise Linux operating system the version would be 7 and then the database that I'm going to use would be Oracle 12c non CDB database environment so having said this we are now ready to start our actual course with the first part the first chapter which is bash script basics and wherein the first subtopic for our discussion is shell programs so let us discuss that in detail now so before we start this uh, we will end the session here because this session is meant to give you introduction to this course and also to explain you what are the prerequisites that are required to start this course so in the next session we will be completely concentrating on the first chapter which is bash script basics and uh, please remember one point which I missed to tell you so in the complete course we are going to learn the concepts in each and every chapter and also we are going to perform the activities then and there as you see on the screen uh, you know uh, for example you are on the first you know chapter this is the sub topic of this chapter and uh, once I explain the concepts of this chapter we are going to perform the activity like this so this is what we are going to execute and we are going to see that you know live on the server so that we understand the concepts much better and please remember with this particular course uh, uh, you must be knowing it already if not you will be getting this document also by end of this course which will include you know concepts as well as activities for you and very importantly the last one tools development you know the complete scripts also you'll get and not only this you will be getting the logs which I'm going to execute in the putty session and also you will be getting this document and any further assistance you can always reach or uh, we are there always to help you from any questions that you get thank you thanks a lot meet you in the next session uh, where we actually start the first chapter thank you